So, I wanted to ask a question quickly around this whole context of hearing God and spirituality. Someone has asked me before that what of where everybody around you is hearing a particular prophetic word, right? So maybe two, three people okay. in your church. Like she was, she was kind of doing really well. And so the, everybody was kind of pairing her up with someone else, like just coming to give her all this. And she said God wasn't saying that to her, but she felt black. She felt like she was, she was kind of cornered, like... Please. Everybody was making her feel like she was being canal because she was like, I'm not seeing this thing that you people are seeing. So I also wanted to mention in the place of this spiritually spiritual hearing from God, it's not the responsibility of a third party to hear from God for you, especially when it comes to the issues of marriage. Yeah. Because third party will not marry or marry. <laughs> no. And the truth about it is that even though God speaks to us, as vessels, we are human beings. If you pass water through a rusty channel, it's going to come out rusty. So if people have their own biases and they are receiving through those biases, it's your job as the core Shit. recipient to have heard God first. Okay. To hear God first means that you have to build a relationship with God. Oh. And I don't want to build it because you are getting married. <laughs> I want you to build it because your life depends on it. Yeah. So that when you meet the person, and that's why I tell people that you guys need to stop being afraid of time. You know with God, right? You can meet someone and just know. And then in three months you are dealt. And you'll be married 25 years. Nobody will remember that it took you three months change your mindset when you come to a place where you think you know what god can do that's unbelief so people tell me i haven't met anyone yet the year is already almost half year gone and and i feel that in saying that you're telling god god you know it will take me six months to know the person and it will take me another six months to pray Mm -mm. i just want you to get to the place spend the time knowing god spend the time apart from marriage just building intimacy with god where you can hear god say i want you to call in kitchen and you call in kitchen and you have a word for in kitchen. What happens is that when people come around you, number one, there are some that your spirit will not just take. Like you just be irritated. Like he's not a bad person, but I don't just you I don't it's not yes. So it's all the arsenals possible. I also find out that Christians, because you don't want to be taught to be canal, you don't want to you don't ask the right questions. Ask the questions about money. Ask the questions about plan and purposes. Ask about family culture. Hmm. Ask about what did they do in your culture? How did they treat people, women in your family when people die? ask all the questions don't feel that oh because he loves the lord he loves the lord his family does not love the lord Ah, right yes Mm. so i think that we also have this whole conversation around because i love the lord i don't want to be seen to be asking for too much girl young man you are going giving your life in commitment to someone for the rest of your life there's no question that is too Too big to ask fundamentally marriage is god's idea it's not our own yeah it didn't start with us and there's no way you can get the best out of it without going back to the person that actually conceptualized it in the first place now we need to understand there's marriage as intended by god and there's marriage as practiced by men confirmed mm. yes ah, so me. You, you need to come to a point in t- a point in your life whether you're a christian or not okay how do i want to do this i i came to that point in my in my personal life that i said look I want to do this this way. There are different ways to do a relationship. That's the truth. But God will always leave the choice with you. Now, let's go back to the guy that conceptualizes the first place, God himself. The way he did it was that it should happen between a man and a woman within the confinement of marriage. Now, it set up a lot of stuff. It gave us some things and also brought a lot of things that are forbidden. But most of the time, humanity always takes what God has forbidden and leave what God has given. He gave us sex. We decided to choose adultery or fornication or immorality. Uh-huh. He gave us the f- tree of the tree of life. We decided to go for the forbidden. Uh-huh. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He gave us sex. We chose same sex. Mm. He gave us Adam and Eve. Eve. We chose Adam and Steve. And Eve and Evelyn. So now, sex. Our, sex, beautiful. God's idea. Fantastic. Fantastic idea. And he decided to give this thing to us. Every man has a capacity strong capacity if i have anointed capacity increase so so what am i trying to say but is i do this within marriage marriage is honorable law bed on the foul woman guys our daughters go with judge so whether you like it or not you can't and if you decide to take that off your bible it will still remain order, millions of other copies of bible so you must now come to a point that i want to choose do i want to do relationship this way or i want to do it this way so whether there's any out, out, outcome negative or not, in as much there's a decision, there's a standard 
by the one who gave marriage and relationship that this is how you should, you should do it. Whether, like somebody said, if, if, if God said, no more air fire. So all the holiness I've been practicing, you are now free to do otherwise. Some of us still choose to still live holy. Are you getting me now? So it's a decision, it's a choice. Our life can be better than the quality of our choices. That's the truth. Okay. So now, when we want to go to practical things, now, let me go from my own kind of job I do. Sex is a bonding um, instrument in marriage. When a man comes into sexual intercourse with a woman, in spiritual parlance, we call it soul tie. In science and in my own kind of field of job, we call it um, bonding caused by orgasm. In a woman, it lasts after, after having sex and get to the point of orgasm. In a woman, that bonding effect to that person you have intercourse with lasts for 14 days. In a man, Kai. it lasts for two days. Hmm. That's why out of sex is out of, out of marriage. Because sex is supposed to be like something that re- maintains the engine of your marriage. So I can tell how healthy your marriage is if I look the kind of sex, you, how your sex life is. So what am I trying to say? It's supposed to create a bonding. Now, if you keep having sex with somebody you are not yet married to, apart from the fact that you violate the standard or the, or the instruction of the person who gave it, the manual instruction, what happens is that you keep tying yourself, your soul, to someone that eventually the person may not even marry you. Even if the person marries you, you have laid the wrong foundation for your marriage. Now, we know our life reality differ. We've all done one thing or the other. We all have our own experiences. But the question is, now that I know, what am I going to do with it? It's a choice. What am I going to do? I got to that point in my life after two years, you know, brother, <laughs> after some time, we were using our brother and jeans, as I said earlier. At some point, I said, sister, uh, we came to a conclusion, look, we need to break this now off because I don't want to defy my belt. So we broke off about one year. We did that. It was a choice. But somebody else could have said, okay, look, I'm going to do this. I'll go back to God. The blood of you never finish. You know they finish. Father, I've done it again. No, you're somebody help me, my Lord. I mean, but each time you truncate your flow, your relationship with God, those are going on the same journey. You are not, you are not going to start where they are. They're already gone. You're going to keep restarting, regenerating your work with God every now and then. And you don't know what you are losing each time you are cutting off from God. But this is not judgment zone. This is this is grace zone. So the question is, going forward, what am I going to do? So the mindset is not. Is there anything wrong in having married, um, having sex before marriage? The mindset is, what are the things that God has given me to enjoy by obeying Him? If you go to the book of Genesis, God had given the Adam and Eve the whole of the garden and given them authority over everything on the earth, giving them the dominion mandate. And then the devil came to them and said, ah, the God said that you people should really not eat of this tree. I want you to recognize that tone. Everybody say tone. It's a tone. Because when the devil wants to tempt you, he's going to offer to you everything that God has given you for free and put it on the table of disobedience. So he's going to tell you, you can't really know this woman if you do not sleep with her first. But that's not true. You have the spirit of God, one. Number two, you have faith. Marriage is a faith journey. You're trusting God with this person that God has given me the freedom to go into this marriage knowing that whatever comes our way, we can deal. Sex is important, but sex is not the only thing. You know, you get into marriage and then one medical diagnosis comes. Either of you could not have seen it coming. And the one you need is a husband or a wife that can stand in faith in that place. What is sex? You will not remember sex for two weeks, three weeks. Mm. So the devil has a way of making us focus on the minors. And I don't want you to listen to his voice. So I'm not even going to approach sex from a place of whether it is good or it is bad. Because you see, as believers, we already know that it is wrong. What has happened and what the devil has done in this generation is that he has made the laws of God sound like they are things that are so burdensome. So every day you are asking, it's such a big chore for God to ask for this. But you see, God is not asking us for anything that he has not given us capacity to do. So when we walk in fellowship with God, what God does is that gives us the capacity to obey him. But I want you to recognize it's not only when it comes to sex, when it comes to doing business, when it comes to getting into relationships, the devil you. is going to always minimize the word of God. And it's always going to show you a half empty, a half empty bottle, as though you are missing something big. Mm. Child of God, you are not missing anything when you obey God. You're yeah. not. Yeah, can I add something here? I want to just uh, say two things there. Number one, you miss out on the opportunity to learn. Number two, you're blind. Miss out on the opportunity to learn. You need to know that after you get married, you will still find other people that are your spec. And sometimes they are 
like upgraded versions. Do you understand? <laughs> so you wanted tall, uh, dark, and handsome. You found this one that you see after your wedding. So dark, handsome, has a lot more money than your husband, and maybe buys you roses when you didn't ask for it, or something of that sort. If you did not learn to say no, you will now be amongst, um, your, there's a likelihood that you will now be amongst those who are getting into affairs and stuff like that. Because you did not learn. You did not learn. You missed out on the opportunity. You threw away the opportunity. Now that you are single, you have the chance to build muscle in saying no. So that after you are married and they come, you will still, it's easy, it's very easy for me. I just say, okay, where is that my uh, catalog of how to behave myself so that we don't enter trouble? I just read it out and uh, implement it. And there's no story. But if you did not learn, you come back, I don't really know what to do. The guy, you know, you know those people that you get into the office and they come like, wow, you're looking so and, good today. And their voice, their <laughs> voice. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you're just like, oh, you're just giving me so much. Is that? Like, no. You know what, if you, if you learned, you will know what to do. If you didn't learn, then you will be in trouble and you'll be looking for help. So that's number one. Number two, um, what did I say? Blind. Blinds you. You see this thing, eh? Some people say, I'm just so in love. Like, I'm so in love. I'm so in love. And when you're so in love, you don't check. So that's why I said that your love must wear glasses. Go and buy. Go and, go and, go and get love glasses. L love glasses just means engage your head. But the thing is, when you start having sex and stuff like that, the people who do it, they know that it is like, you said, glue. In addition to glue, it is like, uh, like shades that prevents you from seeing clearly. They can't do anything wrong. You know, in fact, sometimes they do something wrong and you realize it's wrong and you want to, ad you want to address it, but the person just happens to put their hand on a certain place. Certain or, or, place. Or, or, sometimes it's just to touch the tip of your shoulder. And you just remember. And you just forget what they did that was wrong. And before you know it, you're married. And then you start saying, I, I don't know why I didn't see this before. But the fact is, you saw it, but you were having sex. You're not missing anything because you have years to do this sex thing. Do you know? Do you know that? After Even after people, your do you know that after people get married, they start. Some people start making excuses like, oh, yes, "Honey, I'm so tired today. Like, I have a headache. Like, can we do this another day?" Like, I'm there's really something tired called sexless right marriage now. So why do you why do you start wasting the energy now? Conserve the energy so that after the wedding, you don't have to be giving excuses like, "I have a deadline at the office." and stuff like that you like know uncles. or that you know the the children were really troublesome today and i i just can't add you to the picture mm. see, see keep the energy for that time um as as much as god is a compassionate father that is not going to come judge you i want you to live your life wanting to please god mm. i want you to live a life as a single person where you know that god is pleased with you where you feel the spirit of god breathe and god say i'm delighting in you i don't want you to live in a life because the devil is waiting to accuse you and he's just waiting for you to make a sleep. He does not accuse people that are not children of God. Though. But he's going to accuse you and cause you to be walking in guilt. See, God's grace is more than available for you to stay away. Okay. And I want you to also use this as a... I want you to choose as a man. Choose a woman that will choose to obey God. As a woman, choose a man that will choose to obey God. Not because it's easy. Because you have the rest of your life. See, life is a destiny conversation. It's a destiny ah. appointment. Mm. So you also don't want to start a journey with someone that God cannot entrust commandments to i'm not speaking marriage is not a joke and life itself is a battle so how are you starting with someone that at the slightest inconvenience would choose to disobey god mm. for five, maybe 10 15 minutes nah i don't think that that's a healthy if you're looking for someone that you want like a woman you're looking for someone the bible says that the heart of the man trusts in his wife so as a man you want to trust in a woman that can take a decision that is backed by the word of god even when it is inconveniencing for her personal desires so that should be a part of the thing you're desiring. I want to obey God. And I'm going to choose someone that will obey God even when it is inconvenient. Not because it's necessarily easy. easy. So tomorrow when a business deal comes to, he will say no. Because God is not pleased by it. Tomorrow when the village people come with their culture, he will say no. That's not what the word of God says I should do with my wife. I do not support it. I will not treat her this way. You have a whole journey ahead. When you want a man to choose God, you should start to choose God before you get married.
every time there's an opportunity to do what God has asked us not to do, the consequence is always far reaching than is obvious to the eyes. Mm. Now, how was that? If you liked it, this is a good time for you to click like. And if you didn't really like it, but then you learned something and you know someone who can also gain from, you know, the things we talked about here, please share. It's a good time to share, 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 share. Share on, uh, on Twitter, share on Facebook, share on your WhatsApp, share everywhere. Help us spread the word. Yes. And just in case you have not yet subscribed to this channel, this is a good time to do so. Subscribe, please. And click that notification button, the bell. Yes, click it so that every single time we upload something, you will be one of the first to know. Finally, if you want to tell us what to do on this channel, mm -hmm. As in, you know, some of those extra, extra things that we can use to a ginger the swagger. <laughs> a busy swagger, this one, whatever. Anyway, yes, leave a comment. And if you really enjoyed the video, leave a comment. And if you feel there's something we should do better, leave a comment. And if you don't even like what I'm saying, leave a comment. Bye!